Okay, so today I'm going to talk you through um, oil and gas off of the Irish coast. So I suppose what comes as a surprise to many people is that we actually do have deposits of oil and gas located around the coast of Ireland. But I suppose we don't really hear much about it being drilled out or I'll talk you through that anyway. So I'll just run you through the search for oil and gas in Irish waters. Um, I suppose there's a big demand for oil and gas. A lot of our homes, we have um, home heating oil tanks. We heat up our homes via oil. Um, we all drive cars. You'll want to drive a car in future. You'll need your petrol or your diesel. Um, some of you have gas inside in your homes. Some schools and businesses are heated by gas heating. So there's a big, big demand for oil and gas in Ireland in recent years. So it has kind of prompted us to think, should we look in our own seas for oil and gas? Um, and can we drill that out? Um, I suppose it's not just in Ireland. Countries all across the world have kind of looked in their own waters to see is there any oil and gas there. This has been very successful for some, um, particularly in the North Sea, between Britain and Norway. They've discovered quite a lot of um, oil and gas there, so they've been looking and locating that. Um, so this kind of prompted a lot of companies to come to Ireland, and they kind of saw us and they thought, well, they're surrounded by a load of sea. Maybe they've got a lot of oil and gas. So what happens for them to come in is they have to contact the Irish government, and they have to tell them what part of the Irish Sea that they want to drill in, and they get a license for doing that. So the government grant a license to this big company. Um, so when they get the license, then they drill for oil or gas. Now, when they drill down into the seabed, they're drilling down into rock. And when they take out whatever oil or gas comes out of it, they test it to see is a good quality. If it's good quality, then they go back and they run tests to see is there a good enough quantity of it there. Because if there isn't enough of it there, there's no point in drilling it out because it will cost you a fortune to set everything up. If you're not going to make the money back, there's no point. So we actually have discovered oil off the Waterford and off of the Cork coast. However, any company that did discover the oil off of the Waterford and Cork coast, they've decided not to bother setting up production. They've decided not to bother drilling it out because there's a very, very small amount of oil. So that's a pity. Maybe down the road, when we're really begging for oil and really looking for it, we might drill it out then, but I wouldn't imagine at the moment. Um... So the cost of bringing the oil ashore would be more than the value of the oil itself. Um, so at the moment, we're not drilling the oil out. Um, as regards gas, we have actually found good deposits of gas in Ireland. Um, our two locations are, one of them is off of the Kinsale coast, off of the coast of Kinsale. Um, you can see it in the second picture there on the right-hand side. We've actually got, um, and it's not too far, it's on about 50 kilometres off of the coast of Kinsale. They've basically discovered a big gas field in the rock underneath the seabed. And they've been drilling that out for over 30 or 40 years, something like that. And it's been supplying Ireland with loads of its gas for years and years. Now, they're actually closing it this year because they've drilled out all the gas that they can possibly drill out. So we have been lucky enough to find another gas field off of the coast of Mayo, and that is going to supply us with gas for a number of years. So I suppose when one gas field is closing, the other one is kind of opening and kind of easing the pressure and supplying us with gas for many years to come. Um, just having a look at this map here, I suppose this shows you all of the potential oil locations and gas locations across Ireland. And there's quite a lot of them. So I suppose you might ask the question, why don't the Irish government just drill for oil and gas themselves? And this would mean that we would own the oil and gas fields because we're the Irish people. We don't have the resources for that. We don't have the money to do it. We we were, we never did that before, so we're not set up to do it. We don't really know what we're doing. Um, there's nothing to stop us doing it in the future, of course. I suppose the easiest thing for us to do is we rent um, the plot of the seabed to these global companies that come in like Shell um, or Amber or Topaz. We rent the seabed to them. We give them a license to drill there. And that's probably the bit of money that we're making. But it is a pity that we don't drill it out ourselves. So I'm just going to skip on a few slides a moment. Um, and I want to talk to you about the Carb gas field. Because that's what you read the article on for homework. And it's really good to know about it in case it ever comes up in a test in your junior cycle exam. So the Carb gas field is a gas field that's located off of the coast of Mayo. And it's actually quite close to the coast of Mayo. You can see it in the map there. It's only about 80 or 83 kilometers away from the coast. So it's relatively, relatively close. Um, it was discovered in 1996. So about, imagine, 24 years ago at this stage. 
So it was discovered in 1996 and it was discovered by Shell. Now, I'm not sure if you've heard of the oil company Shell, but they would be a big global multinational business worth a fortune. And they're mostly go around the world searching for oil and gas fields to drill. Um, so they discovered it in 1996 and they found a good quality gas and they found there's actually plenty of gas there. So they were delighted with that. The gas field up off the coast of Mayo is 70% the size of the Kinsale head one. So that's really good. So it's going to supply us with almost the same amount of gas that Kinsale has been supplying us with. It will supply us with gas for up to 20 years, meeting 60% of our gas needs. So that means we only need to import 40% of our gas from abroad, say get it in from Russia or somewhere. That's really good because it's actually cheaper to buy it locally than it is to import it in from another country. Because you can imagine the cost for those foreign countries importing it in via pipeline. So buy it locally and it's cheaper. Um, so when Shell discovered the gas field, their plan was to build the gas rig out 80 kilometers out in the ocean, as you can see in the red mark there on the map. And their plan was to bring and pipe that gas untreated via pipeline all the way onto the on through the ocean onshore onto the land about 90 kilometers of a distance into a terminal a gas terminal now a gas terminal is gas factory and they planned to treat the gas there now when i say treat the gas you basically reduce the pressure in it okay so when they drill it out on the offshore gas rig it's untreated they plan to bring the untreated gas which has high pressure in it via pipeline onshore onto the land to a gas terminal okay running through people's farmland and running through people's homes now you can imagine that that caused a lot of controversy um it was the setting up of the whole gas factory and the pipeline was delayed for years and years and years because of protests from the locals so they were objecting to the planning permission and they protested for almost 10 years um, why were they angry about this well they were angry because number one they weren't consulted about the route of the pipeline it was just decided upon nobody consulted the locals people's homes were going to be interfered with in farmland and it's a very much agricultural community up there so they weren't happy um, they felt that the gas pipeline was going to be running very very close to their homes and the danger of this is that if you bring gas in a pipeline on land that's untreated, as I said to you a few moments ago, untreated gas is high pressure, it's highly explosive, so there's an increased risk of explosion, okay? So the locals were trying to say to Shell, wouldn't you just treat the gas out on the offshore gas rig? When you, most gas companies do that, when they build the gas rig offshore, they treat the gas out there, out in the sea. And then they bring it into the land when it is lower pressure and when it's treated and then it's safer. So they just couldn't understand why Shell wanted to do it this way and put everyone's lives, um, animals, people at risk. Okay, so they feared as well. Another problem was they were afraid that when they were going to build the gas terminal, the gas factory on the land, it was built on forestry land and they were afraid it was going to contaminate water supply. So they were afraid that they were going to get like, you know, infected or um, affected by that. Um, so the locals felt, why don't they just do the processing and the treating of the gas out at sea? It's less risk and it's safer. And it's not interfering with any animals, any wildlife um, or any people's homes. And there's no risk. They had to protest for almost 10 years. They were blocking the machinery and the construction companies from getting in to build the pipeline. Um, the guards were brought in. It was really a big thing in the news, actually, for the time that it happened. I remember it myself. Um, the Rossport Five were in the media a lot. They were five um, grown men like from up in the region who were jailed for 94 days for trying to protest against it. I mean, it's mad. There's people who commit serious crimes that don't get jail time for it and they got it, you know. Um, unfortunately, they lost their fight. The government granted permission to Shell to start production. And as you can see in the picture there, you can see a load of cranes and machinery laying down the pipeline. So it was just unfortunate after all the locals' protests and effort that they went to that they just didn't, they weren't successful. Um, so production, imaginely, only started in 2015. I mean, they discovered the gas in 1996. 
and they only started producing and piping it out in 2015, that'll tell you how long the delay was. Now, I figure there must be a hell of a lot of gas there and there must be a lot of money to make because if Shell stuck around through all them protests, they must really know they're going to make a profit out of it. Um, so the gas is transported untreated via pipeline from the offshore gas rig to the onshore gas terminal or facility or factory and it runs through 90 kilometers of pipeline. So you can see there's a big construction, even that factory you can see in front of you, there's a lot of set up there. At the gas terminal, at the gas factory, they treat the gas, they reduce the pressure, and then they deliver it to Gas Networks Ireland. And you've surely heard of them. They're the company that deliver the gas to the homes and businesses. Okay, So that means that we get 60% of our gas from them, and the other 40% we only need to import in from abroad. In 2018, so two years ago, interestingly, Shell actually sold their stake in the carb gas field at a loss. They must have been really fed up at that stage. And they, I suppose they just wanted out. Um, now, there are other people that are involved in running it. Um, it's partly run by Vermilion and other stakeholders. So there's still a lot of money to be made in it. But I suppose Shell were just probably fed up of years and years of protests. At that stage, they wanted out. Um, the good and beneficial, beneficial side of the whole carb gas field is that when it was being constructed, when they were building the gas rig, when they were building the pipeline, when they were building the gas terminal, 6,000 people were involved in constructing the whole thing like that's six thousand jobs that's a lot of people employed and that's a lot of money being spent locally so that's really really good then the actual shell company spent 22 million euros themselves upgrading local roads so they were very conscious of the fact that they had heavy machinery and heavy trucks driving on those roads bringing pipes and laying pipeline and the roads were destroyed so that was good of them that they spent 22 million upgrading the local roads. That would benefit the local people. Um, it had a spin-off effect on the local economy when it was being built because earlier, what did we say, there was 6,000 people in, um, employed at the time. A lot of those were local people and a lot were fellas from Cork, from Dublin, and they were staying up there in the Mayo region for the duration of the construction. They would have been staying in local hotels, local B&Bs, going to local supermarkets, restaurants, barbers, hairdressers, whatever, you name it. Um, they were spending their money locally. So there was a big spin-off effect for the local businesses. Um, at the moment, they employ 150 people full-time. So that's really, really positive. There's 150 people up in Mayo employed full-time in this, like especially for a region that doesn't really have a whole lot of businesses up there and really depend on farming. It's good that there's work created. Um, I hope I've explained that okay. Um, and feel free to message me if you've